Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. It is so good to be back with you. I've been gone for a few weeks while Julia was in California, and I was still in Texas, so she was doing the lessons, and I just was not able to participate because we didn't have that kind of equipment. But it is glad to be back. I am so happy. And it is really good to have you back. I've missed you very much, and I think that the lessons are better when we're both here. Well, I don't know. I think you did a great job. Well, I, 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 tried, I tried my best, and it's very, very good to have you back. I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> well, you have been learning about God's power and how God has power over creation, mm -hmm. how his power and plan for us in our personal lives and how God has the power to save each and every one of us. So God just really has amazing power. And today we're going to learn about God's power in giving us the Ten Commandments and a guideline of how we should live our lives as uh, people who are following the Lord's will in their life. So let's begin with a word of prayer. And Julia, will you lead us in prayer? I certainly will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for bringing us together. We thank you for the children and their families who are listening to us, either today or later. We thank you for bringing Rudy and I back together again so that we can try and give the best message together that we can. We ask you to teach, help us teach well and help us learn well and help us go forth in the world and live according to your will. We pray this in Jesus' name and we say, Amen. Amen. Well, there's a lot of scripture about the Ten Commandments. In fact, there's a, two full books on the Ten Commandments. Sure. And we're going to read just parts of it today. Uh, there are a number of chapters in Exodus and uh, chapter 5 in uh, Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. But we're going to focus mainly on Exodus today and just on certain verses where we'll have time to discuss the importance of the Ten Commandments and how we should live our lives. So, Julia, with that, would you start sure. Our, sure. our Bible reading? So we're starting first in Exodus chapter 20, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt where you were slaves. You must not have any other gods except me. Boy, that last point is the really pivotal foundation of our Christian faith. We can put nobody before God. And that's the first commandment. That is the first commandment. Uh, in Exodus 27 and 8, in 12 and 17, we read the following. You must not use the name of the Lord your God thoughtlessly. The Lord will punish anyone who is guilty and misuses his name. Remember to keep the Sabbath as a holy day. Honor your father and your mother. Then you will live a long time in the land the Lord your God is going to give you. You must not murder anyone. You must not be guilty of adultery. You must not steal. You must not tell lies about your neighbor. You must not covet what your neighbor has. So going forward into Exodus 20 still, verses 18 and 19. The people heard the thunder and the trumpet. They saw lightning on the mountain and smoke rising from the mountain. They shook with fear and stood far away from the mountain. And then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, then we will listen, but don't let God speak to us, or we will die. 
Then Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. God has come to test you. He wants you to respect him so that you will not sin. So then continuing on, we're in Exodus 32, starting in chapter 1, we read, The people saw that a long time had passed, and Moses had not come down from the mountain. So they gathered around Aaron. They said to him, Moses led us out of Egypt, but we don't know what's happened to him. So make us gods who will lead us. Do you understand that? The day before there were no gods, today they want to make gods. Aaron said to the people, take off the gold earrings that your wives wear, your sons and daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So reading on, all the people took their gold earrings and brought them to Aaron. And Aaron took the gold from the people and he melted it down and he made a statue of a calf and he finished it with a tool. Then the people said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you out of Egypt. Isn't that kind of strange? They made a statue of a calf and said, this is the God who brought you out of Egypt. And they had just gone through marvelous miracles from the time of the plagues. Mm -hmm. uh, the Red Sea parted. The Red Sea parted. The they had the pillar of smoke to follow. They had manna coming from heaven. And My had, goodness. Yeah. Some, You know, you hear people say, well, if they did miracles today, I would believe. Well, they did miracles back in those days, a lot of them. And look what happened. Many, many of them failed to believe. So is, is this like kind of having like a special penny and being afraid when you don't have your penny? Probably. Kind of like that, huh? Kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, when you have, when you believe in something that will help you in your life and that anything other than God, that you turn to anything other than God, that's creating a, a new God. No, it's, um, and, and people can do that in ways that they don't even realize. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, it could be a person like me who likes to fish, and maybe I start fishing on every Sunday, and I don't have time to go to church because I want to go fishing, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of salmon out there, mm -hmm. and I just got to get out there and catch it. Now, you know, we every day we're called to make decisions, and every day the Lord calls on us to worship Him, and we just need to respond and, and realize that God has to be first in our lives in everything mm -hmm. that we do. Mm -hmm. So we... We're, we need to be careful that we're not trusting in things other than God. We have people who help us, but we don't have people who are gods. No. We, we have things that we take comfort in. We love our dog. We love maybe our, some of our video games. But those aren't gods. No. We just got to make sure that we put nothing between us and God first. That's why God said you can have no other gods before me because without that connection direct to God first in our lives we're going to fall short of what he would like to see us do yeah. well so, how, how long had the had the Israelites been free from slavery this is an amazing thing it had only been two months two months two months and they were already falling away. And Moses had only been on the mountain for 40 days. And he was up receiving the written commandments where God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger. And he was also receiving instructions in how the people should worship God, how the uh, tabernacle should be built, how the priests should be selected, how they should dress just a lot of details. And that's why he was on the mountain for 40 days communing with God. Because God was preparing Moses to be the leader of a new nation. So, so God was giving Moses instructions to go down and teach. Yeah. Kind of like to be a pastor, sort of. Kind of. 
And and why was he why was he doing that? Why was he giving Moses those instructions? Well, because the people that he pulled out of the Hebrews, as we call them, that came out of Egypt, had not been a nation for a number of years because they had been in bondage. So God was building a nation. And if you're going to build a nation, you have to have guidelines and you have to have rules. And most importantly, since it was to be a God-fearing nation, we, the people had to be taught how to worship. They didn't have a Bible, remember? When, mm -hmm. you know, they true. just had words. That's true. Moses wrote a number of the, the first books of the Bible, so, and he hadn't written them yet. We have the advantage today of having God's Word before us, the Old Testament and the New Testament. But the new young Hebrew nation did not have that yet. So they had a lot to learn. So he told Moses to go back down the mountain after he had finished instructing him and giving him his instruction? Well, we don't know if he was totally done, but he knew what the people were doing. And he sent Moses back down the mountain because the people were sinning. They were falling away. He knew what they were saying, what they were thinking. What they were worshiping. What they were worshiping, this golden calf that they made. So he sent Moses back down to correct the situation. And God was very, very angry with the Hebrew people and those who chose to worship the golden idol. Now, not all the people did that, only some. And they paid a terrible price they for did. that, for falling away like that. They did. And with, was, was Moses angry? Moses was very angry. And Moses, you know, he's lost his temper a couple of times. Yeah. He did, God doesn't want Moses losing his temper. And one of the things he did, he had two tablets in his hand. And on those words, the words that were written by God's own finger, can you imagine holding something that God had written on with his finger? What an amazing opportunity that would be. But he got so angry at the people, he threw the tablets down and broke them to pieces. And he started criticizing the people. Were the tablets like iPads? No, they were heavy stones. I, mean, heavy I, I bet stone. they weighed 50 pounds a piece. And, uh, stone tablets that God wrote on. With his finger. With his finger. And Moses threw them and they broke. Yes. That's exactly what happened. Okay. All right. So. And the reason he did it is because they were worshiping idols. Yeah. A golden calf. On Tuesday, no calf. Wednesday, there's a calf, and all of a sudden that calf is gold. And it is a god, and they were worshiping that. When they had a god in heaven who was on the mountain communing and directing Moses on how to build a nation, a godly nation, the people just fell away. The god who just brought them out of Egypt. And yeah, brought them across with the many, desert. many miracles. That's yeah. the amazing thing. So, in today's lesson, we learn how important it is that we stay with God daily. How easy it is to stray into temptation. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're not studying God's word every day, and if you're not talking to God every day, either in a form of prayer or just in conversation. It is so easy for the devil to get in and start pushing you away. You miss one day, then it's two days, then it's three days, and all of a sudden it's a habit. So it's important that you take each day and you know just say, Lord, I know you're up there, and I need your help to stay, and I give you this day to direct my life however you see fit to direct it.
but I want to be in tune with you. I want to follow your steps, and I want to be sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Now, some of you younger kids are not going to fully understand that today, and we, and we realize that. But remember, God loves you. He loves you more than your parents love you because he has a greater love than any human can. So in your way, just thank God for your parents every day. For your toys. And your toys and your house. And your food. And, yeah, you know, I mean, God does so much for us, and, and we just don't thank him enough. So... And you, ask him for help. Yeah, when you're nervous about something or scared about something or just concerned about something, ask God for help and he'll help you. Every day? Every day. Well, yeah. Just one time? No, do it as often. Many, many times every day. We should, God should be foremost in our minds and hearts all day, every day. Julia, would you lead us in closing prayer? I will. I will. This is such an important lesson, Lauren. Thank you so much for putting this in the Bible for us. Thank you so much for leading the Israelites out of slavery and showing us in the Bible all the amazing things you do for your children. Lord, we ask you to hold us close to you. We ask you when we're scared, maybe of wildfires or... Um, of something that goes bump in the night, Lord, we ask you to remind us to pray to you. And when we wake up in the morning, Lord, and we're wondering what we want to do today, remind us, Lord, to have us talk to you, to pray to you, to talk about what we're going to do today, to pray about what you would have us do. And Lord, every time we get angry or we get sad or we get happy, Lord, remind us to pray to you and to tell you what's on our mind, to give you thanks, to ask you for help, Lord. This is the biggest and most important lesson. And so, Lord, we ask you to put it in our hearts and help us keep, us, keep it there and live by that every single day. And we pray this in Jesus' name, and we say, Amen. Amen. Have a good week. All right. See you we'll next week. See you next Sunday.